I'm not going to be purchasing a Panasonic S5 Mark II. It's a great looking camera, but the Sony a7 IV does everything we need to and there's no need to switch. However, if you are looking for a new camera, here's five reasons why perhaps you should consider the Panasonic S5 Mark II over the a7 IV. The first and probably most obvious reason why you would consider picking up the Panasonic S5 Mark II over the Sony a7 IV is the fact that it is actually cheaper. It's cheaper by a significant amount as well, enough that you could put that towards a very nice lens or other accessories you might want for your camera setup. Certainly, if you're switching from an already Sony camera, then this isn't an advantage. And that's why I don't think if you're switching, it makes much sense. But if you're starting from scratch, then this is certainly one of the reasons why an S5 Mark II makes a lot of sense. The second reason is the stabilization. Panasonic have been amazing with their stabilization over the years. When we had a Panasonic GH5, it was unbeatable. It was incredible how stable uh, it could make images look. You, know, you could set it into the tripod mode, for example, and it really would look like you just sat on a tripod. Pod. And well, none of the other manufacturers have come close to what Panasonic can do. The stabilization on Sony's isn't too bad. It gets by, it certainly helps getting rid of all that jitter, which is the main reason why you want a stabilized sensor. However, it's not up to the same standards of Panasonic. Something that really intrigues me about the Panasonic cameras that are coming out right now is the option for shooting open gate. If you don't know what that is, it's basically using the entire sensor rather than just the 16x9 crop like we do normally when filming uh, in video modes on cameras. There's a big advantage of this, of course, it means you're using more of the sensor. So if you're using anamorphic lenses, for example, you're getting more detail in there rather than cropping it down. However, there are other uses as well. You don't have to just use it for anamorphic purposes. You can actually just use the full sensor um, and use it so that you've got extra height in the image. This is especially useful for when doing social media content. Another area that I think this could be really useful, and this is where I personally would be intrigued about using a Panasonic, is when you're doing interiors of uh, real estate or resorts like what you do, where you need to capture as much of the room as possible. Now, of course, the final output is probably going to be 16 by nine, although we may do a vertical version for social media. But for me, having that extra height would mean you could actually sort of do a digital lens shift uh, in post. So for example, you can set it up, make sure all your verticals are correct, but rather than using a tilt shift lens, you can then uh, shift up and down the image slightly in post if you want to capture, say, more of the ceiling or more of the floor. I could also see this being useful as a final output for clients as well. The photographers we work with all shoot 3x2, which is the standard sort of uh, frame size on most full frame sensors. And well, if you could shoot video 3x2 as well, it means there's a lot more synergy there and matching up the styles between photography and video. I could see this especially useful for say website banner heads, where you have the videos playing on a loop at the top of the screen and having it as a 2x3 is probably more in keeping with say the photography and the style and layout of the website than shooting 16x9. The fourth reason, and this is probably the most professional reason why you would want to pick up a Panasonic uh, S5 Mark II over the A7 IV, and that is the fact that it has a built-in fan. Now I really love they haven't had to sacrifice the viewfinder here or do anything else weird with the camera to make this work. They've just added it in inside a normal mirrorless body. And well, a fan can be a really critical part of a camera setup, especially if you're doing lots of long filming. Now, I've not really had any issues with the a7 IV overheating. I've just set it to the high temperature mode. And other than one occasion where it did give me the warning after about 40 minutes of 4K filming handheld, which I think is probably the reason why it got so warm, I've had no real issues with the a7 IV. But certainly having the confidence uh, and knowing for sure that the camera isn't going to overheat in a really critical situation is really what you want when shooting professionally, especially if it's something you've only got one opportunity to capture. Say something like a wedding, for example. I think in that situation, you really don't want to be risking your camera overheating. And I probably would pick the Panasonic over the a7 IV for that one reason. Equally, if you're doing any event filming or wedding filming and you just have an unmanned camera that perhaps you want to set up for the entirety of the event, having a fan built in will ensure that, of course, that you manage to capture all of it. 
Finally, there is the video tools that Panasonic offer in their cameras. Things like waveform, things like having shutter angle, so you don't have to constantly change your shutter speed every time uh, you change your frame rate. These aren't major deals breakers for me. It's not a reason why I wouldn't go for a certain camera if it can be made up in other features, but it's certainly something that I think should just be in all cameras nowadays, just because it doesn't cost any more to add these features to the cameras themselves. Sony certainly should be adding this to the FX30 and FX3 at the very least, even if we don't see it on the A7 IV. So for now, it certainly is a Panasonic advantage, but equally, there is no reason why other manufacturers like Sony couldn't just add this in a firmware update, negating this one big advantage. As I mentioned at the beginning, I won't be switching to the S5 Mark II. It's a really impressive camera. I'd love to pick one up and try it out, but I just can't justify buying yet another brand of camera. I think it just wouldn't be sensible to do that, especially when the cameras that we already own do such a wonderful job. I really want to have more cameras that I can match up, and that's the one big advantage that Sony can offer. You know, I can shoot everything from the FX3, uh, an A7S3, an FX6, uh, and then the A7 IV, and I know the image is going to look very similar across the board and that's really quite useful um, when you're wanting to do more than one camera uh, setups. Now certainly if I was starting out though I think this would be a sensible option. I'm really excited to see what Panasonic do in the future. I think that's going to be the really key thing here. What is going to be the big brother to this camera? This is a great starting point but there are still some flaws with this camera and some limitations that you know are to be expected in this price bracket. But certainly when they bring out like the S1H, perhaps where it is a real FX3 competitor with all the horsepower and all the ability that that other camera can have, but with the features that Panasonic can offer, then suddenly the whole Panasonic ecosystem is going to get very, very exciting indeed. Perhaps also we'll get to see them package this into a box camera like they did with the GH5. That was such a cool concept and perhaps just a bit late in the game. It'd be nice if they released it alongside this camera or at least very soon after. Then suddenly you've got a really nice starting point to build up your camera with a bigger battery and your own monitor and actually having that paired with the S5 could be a really great combo for a lot of people. And finally quickly, should you even consider the GH6 anymore and Micro Four Thirds? Personally, I think it's getting very tough to justify investing further into Micro Four Thirds. Certainly if you have a big lens collection, uh, then perhaps maybe there's a good reason to stick by it. But I think as full frame cameras just get better and better, there's going to be less reasons to stick with the Micro Four Thirds setup, unless you need something that is really quite small. So there you go, there are my thoughts on the Panasonic S5 Mark II, a really exciting camera. I'd love to know if you're picking one up, and especially so if you're switching from Canon or Sony. Now you may have already seen my other video where I talk about the a7 IV and whether it's still a great camera in 2023, so check out that video because I think a lot of that still applies despite the announcement of the Panasonic S5 Mark II.